Yes, here we are for another town hall meeting with our partners at GBMC, and we have done many of these. And it's because this COVID thing doesn't want to go away. And where are we as of January 27th, especially with vaccines that are rolling out and the fact that we have to worry about these new variants that are inside the United States. So we've got a big hour ahead of us where we will discuss a lot of these things, as well as talk about kids, the impact, the mental health impact on how we get them into schools as fast as possible. We're going to start, though, this morning, C4, with yeah. Dr. Carol Cortez. She is, she's a physician of infectious diseases at GBMC Healthcare. Great to have you Good on, morning. Doctor. We appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you very much. Um, um, great to be here. There's so much to talk about, but I did want to start off first on, on how you could describe what it is like now in the hospital. It seems like we are, you know, maybe post-peak of what we have seen in the last couple of days, but give us an idea of what it's been like um, in the last uh, two months or so at GBMC in dealing with COVID-infected patients. Mm, thank you for that question. Um, we have been uh, trying to hold our own. Uh, it's been difficult because we have more and more patients, actually. There is no such a thing as we have arrived to the peak. Um, they're still coming in, and patients are sick. So it has been uh, a roller coaster in terms of what we can do for the patients. Patients are coming in and still very sick. And the other problem is that they can come in more than once. That is, they come in, go out, and then come back, still having COVID. Infectious disease physician at GBMC Health Partners Infectious Diseases, Dr. Carol J. Cortez is on board with us. And Dr. Cortez, when it comes to the vaccines that are out now, we know we have the Pfizer vaccine, the Moderna vaccine, Johnson & Johnson is coming out. If somebody gets uh, the first dose from one of these you know, companies, they, later on down the road, if they need a booster, is it okay to go, like if you want Pfizer to go to Moderna or go to Johnson & Johnson, should they stick with the original named vaccine? Yeah. The studies have been done for each one of the vaccines, that is, each one of the Pfizer and the Moderna that have been authorized by the FDA for uh, emergency use authorization, that's what it's called. Um, it's, it, you, have to use, you have to use the same vaccine uh, or, or a series. That is, if you use Moderna, you use stick with Moderna, uh, the first dose given, and then the second dose given 28 days apart. Um, same thing with Pfizer. If you, do you, you use or take the Pfizer vaccine, you have to wait 21 days to get the second dose. It should not be interchangeable. That is, if you use Moderna, you should not use Pfizer unless you start the new series completely again. All right. I wanted to go back to your, your original statement about how you have patients that are sick and then they, they're released and they come back. Is that is just because that's the nature of this virus where you, you do feel better and then you get you get sick and it takes a while to get after or, or are they getting reinfected? Yeah, uh, very good question. So what happens is, is that uh, many times patients can come with COVID and they have hypo, say, hypoxia, that is a low level of oxygen in the blood, and they need to be uh, hospitalized for care. Um, many times they go out and they are uh, recovering, but then they can uh, worsen again the symptoms. Mm. Uh, it is a very difficult to predict type of virus, uh, and we're still learning about it. So many times patients stay here and they go home and they recover slowly without any um, other concerns and any other uh, infections. Sometimes they go home and they have already a damage, if you will, at least temporarily, um, lung, and then they can get an infection with the community, acquire pneumonia, bacterial pneumonia. So these kind of combinations may happen. Um, and those are the things that uh, we have noticed here. You're listening to the coronavirus, our virtual town hall special, one of many that we've had with our partners over at GBMC Healthcare. Dr. Carol Cortez, when it comes to these variants we've heard about, UK variants, South Africa and Brazil, how... We first heard that they weren't that deadly, but now we're hearing something different. What do we know about these variants? Yeah, um, a lot of the comments that have come are coming from uh, England, where people are saying that they're more deadly. Um, it's possible that the reporting is different in England than is here, so we're not sure we can interchange the information. We're still learning a lot about this. It is possible that it's more transmissible, it's apparently more transmissible, easier to transmit uh, and infectious, but that doesn't mean that it's more lethal. We don't know yet with exact science if that is the case. It is an observation coming out from England. Is anything Has anything changed when it comes to the to the 
type of patient that you're seeing? I mean, are, are you seeing older patients? Are you seeing younger patients now? Uh, and what impact are, are we seeing with, with COVID in general and, and, and uh, pushing people into the hospitals, co- comorbidities and things yeah. like that? Has, has that stayed constant? Well, no, it hasn't. Uh, now we're seeing also young people um, with minimal comorbidities associated. For example, people with asthma are more likely to get uh, as a risk factor that had been identified previously. So this is nothing new. But, but younger people we have seen now. So initially we saw uh, mainly um, elderly people with comorbidities, like, for example, heart conditions or um, people that had problems in the lungs because of lung term use of tobacco um, and things of that sort. But now uh, you're seeing also patients that are younger without comorbidities or patients that are younger with comorbidities. But definitely a change um, in terms of the, the type of people that are coming in. Dr. Carol J. Cortez is an infectious disease physician at GBMC Health Partners. And Dr. Cortez, when it comes to the vaccine itself, we have heard from some folks who get a rash in their arm or maybe a little bit of fever as part of a reaction. What have you heard and what should people look for as a reaction to the shots? Yeah, well, uh, those are local reactions, and you can even have a little bit of a bricola, a little fever, uh, low-grade temperature. You can have even lymphadenopathies, uh, and that wouldn't be surprising because of uh, uh, immunization. Uh, people that have um, allergies uh, or have known to have a reaction, the best thing for this is to stay um, kind of hanging around for about 15 minutes after the shot is given to make sure that they're not going to faint or they're not going to do anything. Not that it's expected, but it's just to make sure that the patient tolerated the shot. Um, within 24 hours, you may develop a little fever, and then that should go away with Tylenol. Um, in terms of big rashes or anaphylaxis, those are things that are immediate and can be um, picked up quicker, and that's why I'm su- suggesting, which is also um, one of the um, precautions that have been um, underlined, um, that uh, people should stick around for about 15, 20 minutes at the office, wherever they get the vaccine. Have have we gotten better at treating patients? I mean, what what have we learned? What are we doing now yeah. regarding helping people get better? And are we having more success in keeping people alive? Yes. Uh, very good question again. Um, yes, we have. Be, initially, we didn't know much about the virus at all. And we still are learning about it because we are learning as it goes. Uh, and this pandemic is, un- I mean, is, is incredible. We have been seeing things that we didn't see before in a much faster manner. Um, so just to, to address your question, it's... Um... Hello? Yes, you're, yes, we're here. We're listening. Okay, right I'm sorry. Yeah. That's all right. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened to my phone. So, so what... Can you repeat the question again now? I well, guess. just said, what, what are we doing better now when it comes to treating patients, and are we actually saving more lives today than we were, you know, say, April right. or May? So before we didn't know that we needed to use, for example, anticoagulants or um, steroids ahead of time or early as soon as the patient would be here and needed yeah. um, some intervention, um, those kind of part of the supportive care. But before, people were um, basically having nothing to offer the patient, and that's why things were giving, you know, giving a mortality that was a little bit on the high end. Remember that everybody, or not everybody rather, not everybody that's going to get uh, infected with SARS-CoV-2, the agent of COVID-19, um, is going to die. Uh, not everybody's going to have a, amazing kind of symptoms. Uh, many people would not be symptomatic, and that is the problem, because people would not be symptomatic and they would be spreading the infection. Um, so when people develop symptoms and they come to the hospital, they are already sick. So what we have been doing is that people that are sick are treated with supportive care, as well as with anticoagulation when needed, as well as steroids. Um, before, the steroids were given only to very sick patients when they were in the unit. Now we're putting that a little bit um, ahead uh, of time, so they are responding better. And I think that has resulted in uh, um, improved survival. Dr. Carol J. Cortez, once again, infectious disease physician at GBMC Healthcare. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time.